Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we are going to be exploring the Capricorn full moon on July 21st, 2024. Thank you so much for being here today with me for this video. In this video, we are going to look at the astrology, the galactic astrology of this full moon. We are also going to go over mini readings for each of the 12 signs. So you can watch for your rising sign, sun sign, moon sign, any of the above, all of the above, however you want to do that. Take what resonates, leave the rest, but definitely watch the full moon overview forecast, the general reading first, and then you can jump to your mini readings, which I will have time stamped in the description below. Stay until the end of the video because I will be sharing with you the Galactic Heritage card that came out for the highest guidance for everyone watching this video. And it is a very beautiful, very synchronistic message. So definitely check that out at the end as well. That'll be time stamped also. Before we dive into the astrology, I want to share with you about a class I am teaching coming up on July 27th, 8 to 1130 a.m. Hawaii time. It is called Astrology Basics with Reiki, Befriend the Planets. And I made a whole video talking about this class and some other fascinating things that just channeled through. So definitely check that out. This is a beginner level class, although we will be diving deep as well, looking at the 10 major planets in astrology. I'm super looking forward to it. This class is for you if you want to expand your intuition with astrology, with Reiki, develop astrological fluency, and heal and reveal the higher frequencies of your natal birth chart and cultivate your authentic relationship with each of the planets. Check out that video and you can learn all about the class as well as details on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I'm so excited about this class and excited for the sacred circle that is coming together for this class. All right, so here is the chart of the upcoming full moon at 29 degrees Capricorn in eight minutes. That's what this notation means, 29 degrees, eight minutes of the zodiac sign Capricorn. The glyph for Capricorn is here on screen as well, as well as the glyph for Saturn because Capricorn zodiac sign is ruled by planet Saturn. That is what we call rulership in astrology. And that's something we will be going over in the class I'm teaching on the planets. So you can see in this chart here, the moon is at the top of the chart here, 29, nine minutes actually in this chart, how I drew it here of the zodiac sign Capricorn. So in that final degree of Capricorn and the sun is exactly opposite 29 degrees, nine minutes of the zodiac sign of Cancer. So I cast this chart for my location in Hawaii, but you can ignore the houses. We are just going to look at the planets and the aspects, the geometries between the planets. And also we will look at if the planets and points are conjunct any of the fixed stars that we look at in galactic astrology. So a full moon in general is a time of 
completion of fruition of wow, I manifested that oftentimes is the case, especially if you engage in new moon rituals, new moon intention setting. By the time the full moon comes around, you can see some of that manifestation. And if you keep working with the new moons long enough, you may see the manifestation of the new moon intentions actually Prior to the full moon, it's wild. It's been blowing me away the longer I do the new moon intention setting work. So some sort of manifestation may be coming into your awareness now. This may also be the light of awareness shining in two different areas of your life, which are inviting you to bring a greater sense of balance. So what's interesting too in this particular cycle is that this is the second full moon we've had in Capricorn. So we had the first full moon, remember, that occurred right after the Cancer solstice. So very, very powerful and potent time. It's like all the themes and healing and material that was brought up in that first Capricorn full moon just a month ago is being brought up again in a certain degree. However, it's like an even deeper layer can be released based on the healing that already occurred based on what came into awareness that sense of endings and new beginnings, a sense of initiation, a sense of changing seasons, changing cycles that was so very present with that full moon Capricorn occurring basically like in same resonance with the Cancer solstice. So fascinating here. We have a completion energy. Again, it's like a mini completion within that that month long cycle. What's also very neat about this full moon, it will get us back on track with the sun entering a new zodiac sign. Then we have a new moon in that new zodiac sign. And then we have a full moon in the corresponding opposite zodiac sign. So we will have a new moon and then the full moon. Next month or next moon cycle, for example, we'll have the Leo new moon and then we will have the full moon in the opposite zodiac sign, Aquarius. And it'll continue like that. Virgo new moon, Pisces full moon. Libra new moon, Aries full moon, and it'll go like that in opposites. We've been having it the other way around where it's like full moon in the new opposite zodiac sign and then the new moon. So this is an interesting reversal and reset of the lunar cycle that's happening that also, I think, speaks to some of that manifestation speed that I was just talking about, that things may have felt like they were manifesting sooner because we were having the full moon first and then we're having the new moon. So it'll be interesting to observe if that sense of increased manifestation speed and cadence is still a part of this reset or if it shifts in another way. Be open to positive results. Okay, so like I said, very similar themes here of Cancer, Capricorn, Mother, Father, Divine Mother, Divine Father, emotional security, financial, physical security, the safety and sanctity of home, of family, of roots, of origin, of the stomach, the breast, the nurturing, the nourishment, the mucous membranes, the moon. This is all very Cancerian versus the coldness of Saturn, the dryness of Saturn, the bones and the structures of the body and the skin and the fingernails and the the hair, the really like physical denser parts of 
our bodies and our beingness, you know, having to toughen up Capricorn, toughen up, protect that Cancerian inner nature, putting up protective shields and so on. So, so much ancestral healing has been going on. And my sense you know, in this particular lunation is that we got more, <laughs> we got more coming. We have more right here. So why am I saying that is because this moon in Capricorn at the final degree of Capricorn is conjunct Pluto in Aquarius. So that is like not subtle at all. This is very deep. This is very transformational. This is like accessing deeper levels of ancestral healing of maternal lineage healing in particular with the moon but it's also it's in capricorn so paternal level and lineage of ancestral healing pluto and aquarius galactic ancestral healing as well multi-dimensional ancestral healing human collective ancestral healing humanoid collective like the entire solar system milky way galaxy and so on this gets very very expansive and the pluto and the moon is in trine to this mars uranus well now it's uranus mars mars is the faster moving planet it's separating from uranus they just conjoined each other i talked about that in my July astrology forecast video. So if you haven't seen that, check that out more about the galactic astrology of that conjunction. It was just fascinating. But this full moon in trine to Uranus Mars brings in more of that galactic dimension. It's also energizing that feeling to me, this feels very similar to like Jupiter entering Gemini that we had at the end of May. And also thinking back to Pluto entering Aquarius back in January of this year, February of this year, there may be closures and endings of things that were started earlier this year, manifestation of things we started earlier this year, and even, you know, next level culminations of thinking back to when Pluto first entered Aquarius back in 2023, in March of 2023, that Pluto first entered Aquarius. So there may be a resonance with, with that time period too, as Pluto in retrograde motion inches closer and closer back to that Aquarius initial degree, zero degrees, zero, zero minutes. So in trine with this Mars Uranus recently very upgraded, Mars sitting on the Pleiadian degree here, Uranus still holding it down on the Algol degree of Perseus constellation. And they make what is called a grand trine when we factor in Lilith, yes, and the supergalactic center. So we have supergalactic center, very early degrees of Libra. We have moon, final degree of Capricorn, Pluto, first degree of Aquarius. And then we have here Uranus, end of Taurus, Mars, very early Gemini, making this grand trine in air. But we also have this element of Earth here present with the moon and Uranus there. So there is a sense of like, this cosmic information is landing and is penetrating the earth and is rippling out and really affecting and resonating with the earth, the future of the earth, the trajectory of the earth, the humanity of the earth as well. So very, very deep, very, very powerful. We do have those signatures of the divine feminine healing, particularly with Uranus al Ghul, the power of nature, the power of feminine kundalini energy, very much at play here. Lilith with the supergalactic center. Lilith, another representation of more of that so-called dark feminine, cosmic feminine, 
wild and free and absolutely untamed feminine energy. And then, of course, we have the moon here, another marker of feminine energy, divine feminine energy, divine mother energy. In the sign of Capricorn, the moon is not happy <laughs> in the sign of Capricorn. The moon is meant to be emotional and cyclic and changing rapidly. It's meant to be feeling. The moon rules the sign of Cancer. In Capricorn, it's completely out of its comfort zone. It's meant to be dry and cold and unemotional here. So there can be a sense of we're releasing that kind of cultural presupposition that that is how we should be emotionally cut off, split off, grow up, suck it up kind of a mentality and really holding space for the release of these unhealthy cultural patterns, these unhealthy parts of our conditioning, of our programming, of the patriarchy, of the families and bloodlines and lineages we've been born into, the ways that that has not gone so well, that has been quite unhealthy, and also revealing more of the gifts and talents and the mastery and the, the ways that that has gone really well. And it has served to advance us and keep us evolving and flowing and growing. There's another very deep signature for healing here as the moon and Pluto are in square to Chiron. Chiron is square this full moon. So Chiron square the sun or the sun is square. Chiron and the moon Pluto squaring Chiron here. So this is another very profound signature of healing our sense of I amness, our sense of worth, and also our divine feminine connection because the stars that Chiron is aligned with speak a star is very connected to the divine feminine. Arcturus boots is very balanced, beautiful, enlightened, healing energy streaming through Arcturus. There is this sense in this possibility of galactic contact being energized or highlighted in some way, possibly more of the negative sides being like exaggerated or embellished in some way. Possibly that would be a lower expression manifestation as it is Mars that is conjoining the Pleiades. So if there are stories about you know, like the threat of extraterrestrials or something like that. Not that sometimes may, maybe that's realistic. I don't want to go against anybody's belief systems, but there may be stories about that type of thing. You know, take what resonates, leave the rest. There also might be a greater sense of, since it's Mars, we have this opportunity to have greater embodied sense of galactic contact and perhaps the Pleiadians like being in our field or sending communications or light languages or codes or feelings in our body or ideas or visitations in our dream or in the nighttime. I know last night, a couple of times I was convinced that a UFO <laughs> was landing <laughs> But really what was happening is the power was going on and off and it was igniting all the different like automatic light systems and people's houses and it was making a really strange noise that sounded like some kind of like big mechanical machine. So it wasn't a UFO that I could perceive physically at least, but it could very well have been, you know, Pleiadian or galactic influence being so present and in the field that it was actually interfering with the power and surging the networks here and surging the grids here. So really, really interesting here, you know, be open to interpret your experiences in different ways. Another signature here of galactic contact is we have Mercury in Leo conjunct Alphard star and Hydra. So Mercury signifying our mind, our communication, conjoining one of the stars here we look at in galactic astrology. This could very much be 
our minds focusing on transformation and receiving information and guidance and support from the invisible realms from beyond the veil that's really helping us navigate and alchemize and alchemically process the content of this particular full moon. So I see this as very helpful, even though actually Mercury is in quincunx to Pluto and the moon here. And that is an uncomfortable aspect. That's an aspect of adjustment. So we may be becoming aware of how we need to make adjustments to better accommodate the transformation that we are undergoing, having healthy emotional outlets, having ways to express ourselves that are true to our heart, that are true to our soul, that give us a greater sense of sovereignty and empowerment here. So very, very powerful here, Alfard Star. There's just a lot to talk about. It doesn't look like necessarily that many galactic alignments. I mean, we do have some empty spaces, but they're all so significant. And what the other couple that I definitely want to talk about is North Node, South Node. North Node, here we have in Aries, 9 degrees, 12 minutes, conjoining Alpha Reticulum Star. And this is extremely interesting in terms of collective evolution, the evolution of humanity as a collective, and how we are receiving higher guidance messages about how we do need to adjust and change. And I'm just putting this together right now. The North Node Aries, as long as it's in Aries, it is ruled by the planet Mars. At the time of this full moon, Mars is in Gemini. Mars in Gemini, as we talked about, is conjunct the stars of the Pleiades. So definitely a signature in terms of higher guidance messages from galactic beings about what we need to do, because it's in Aries, what we actually need to do to alter the trajectory of earth humanity to be in the highest possible alignment. Like what are those actions we need to take to be in, in integrity and to really enact and give form and give power to the earth we want to live in, the bodies we want to live in, the way we want to delight in ourselves on earth and, and finding that sense of individuality that also honors the emotional body. The Zetas, very interesting species. So Alpha Reticuli is linked to Zeta Reticuli or the Zetas for short. I learned about the Zetas from Lisa Royal Holtz channelings, very, very powerful work. And she talks about the Zetas as a version of humanity, in essence, like if we keep going down a certain path, we become them. And the Zetas, what happened with them is that they became so logical, mental, analytical, very technologically oriented, looking at advancement in that very narrow kind of left brain bandwidth. They went so far in that direction that they shut off their emotional bodies and they became an infertile or sterile species that was having trouble really existing they were about to go extinct and actually had to reunite with humanity to help bring back the emotional intelligence the emotional body so that they were able to heal and continue reproducing but they experienced the depths of fear being on the brink of species extinction and losing 
all of that wonderful mastery and evolutionary gains that they had made, all of that was in jeopardy and they were able to come into wholeness and greater sense of balance and work together with humanity to survive and thrive and to become an enlightened species. And it feels very much like these future Zeta beings, you could call them the descendants, you could call them the ascendants, those who descend from us and who do in fact ascend and have become enlightened as giving us and gifting us guidance from the future about how we are to proceed moving forward, the changes we need to make as individuals, Aries, and as a collective of humanity as well. So incredibly powerful here too. The Pluto and Moon conjunction here is conjoining the stars Altair and Aquila constellation, Aladfar and Lyra constellation. Lyra and Aquila are two of our three galactic birds, Lyra the vulture, and Aquila, the eagle. So there is that sense of courage. There is that sense of boldness. There is that sense of rising above, seeing the bigger picture, spreading your wings and flying and taking those leaps of faith and trusting that the universe has got you, trusting the intelligence and wisdom of your soul to spread your wings and fly and be able to navigate the unknown in the uncharted waters and to keep rising above the apparent chaos and crisis and division and to see that higher perspective you know, within the context of your own life as well to keep coming back to center and recentering yourself and observing yourself. I practice this and do that with my emotional triggers as much as I possibly can when something triggers me, just like observing the humanness of the emotional trigger <laughs> and kind of being like, oh, she feels that way, you know, but being able to see it, see it very clearly, see it objectively, not judge myself about it, berate myself about it, but also not be so like engrossed by it that I'm like stuck in it and then have this whole story and this whole like process that it goes on longer and, and actually st sticks the the energy in my body by stepping back and seeing the trigger and like realizing this is actually a very small small thing here and also noticing the underlying belief systems that are being triggered as well it can be quite deep like that and profound from, I mean, like the smallest <laughs> little things that are so tiny in the scheme of things to be able to really observe oneself. This is the gift, one of the gifts of the Lyrans who were able to become an enlightened species as well was this sense of self-observance, being able to observe themselves. And I practice this as much as I possibly can and find this very, very helpful. And the key with it, like I said, is to not go all Virgo and like be hard on yourself or judgmental. I understand <laughs> the draw to do that, but don't do that just to be loving yourself as you observe your human self and have compassion for yourself. That's really, really important. That's so much of this message of Saturn and Pisces, Neptune at the final degree of Pisces here. Yeah, what's also interesting is that Jupiter and Saturn are coming into a square as well. Jupiter, the faster moving planet, is approaching 19 degrees of Gemini, and Saturn is retrograding, and I'll have to check which degree the actual square comes to. It won't be quite 19 degrees, but 
they are in in a square at this time so there is a sense of stop and go expansion contraction manifestation ideas lots of needing to surrender again and again to let go again and again to trust the higher plan again and again to trust divine timing again and again this is so much of our spiritual training here with both saturn and neptune in pisces such a big lesson for us in definitely the rest of 2024 going into 2025 and really until the beginning of 2026 as well we're, we'll start getting the aries energy through saturn and neptune but we are certainly still learning quite a lot about pisces and the art of surrender and spiritual connection unity consciousness and union and wholeness and trust in ourselves and trust in the divine and so let our mini readings begin. I will be starting as the sun is still in, in Cancer. We'll start with Cancer rising and go around the zodiac. I promise it'll be Leo rising to start with next time. And please let me know your comments and what resonates. Let me know what resonates. If this is helpful, if you like the mini readings or if you prefer just more of the general reading that really encourages me to keep going or to adjust to make sure that I am providing what you all are most interested in. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, this full moon is taking place in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships, partnerships, contracts, agreements. You see the moon in the seventh house, Pluto in the eighth house. So there could also be this sense of going really deep, going very, very deep, exploring the depths of your emotions, other people's energies, very intimate relationships. So not just more casual relationships, but more of those union level relationships and becoming more aware of your needs and yourself and your values, your sense of self-worth and having this powerful moment to reflect on what really matters most to you and what do you want in terms of your relationships? Pluto's all about desire. So what do you desire when you're being completely honest with yourself? And this may be brought into greater focus as you just had the Mars-Uranus conjunction in your 11th house of groups, social networks, your community, your tribe, and perhaps making some powerful connections, both in terms of people, also the galactic ideas, your spirit guides, your sense of cosmic consciousness and the field of knowledge that you're able to really tap into and finding more awakened groups of people, changes within your friendships and your groups and your networks that really show you kind of what you deserve in terms of your relationships and perhaps some sort of recalibration is needing to happen as you are cultivating this greater sense of love and awareness of how very beautiful and special that you are. So the more you can really envelop your sense, yourself in a sense of self-love, the better. And the more you can release any kind of expectations, obligations, duties, contracts, agreements, 
from partnerships or other people's energies that no longer serve you, really the better off here and trusting your connection to the divine, trusting that you are on the right path, that you are being guided in doing so and that it's it's powerfully setting you up for the next steps along your journey as you engage in this way that there's quite a lot of support that is ready to meet you as you say yes to your transforming relationships and your transforming sense of self. So happy Capricorn full moon to you, Cancer, and very happy birthday in your birthday season. For Leo and Leo rising, this full moon is occurring in your sixth astrological house of health, your daily routine, your daily habits, Pluto here on your descendant, so Lots of relationship changes, changes in partnerships, changes in romantic relationships, business relationships, any kind of one-on-one -on -one relationships. These are transforming as you also transform and embody a greater sense of self-love and self-worth and clarity around who you are and what matters to you and what you're all about and hearing your own inner voice and your own inner guidance, loving yourself here. So there may be greater awareness about how you've changed, how you've grown, how you've trusted, how you may have come through kind of a, a dark period of not really knowing what's next, but trusting the process and still feeling like you're somewhat engaged in this dark night of the soul or this time that's been really quite challenging and bringing up a lot that maybe you thought you had already processed and you have, but there's just additional layers to be shed. All the work you've done previously has prepared you for the deeper healing that you are now undergoing and naturally your relationships are changing. There has likely been some changes in work, in career, as the Mars-Uranus conjunction occurred in your 10th astrological house of career, your public reputation, your status. This could also be a change within one of the parents, possibly the mother, but this could also be the father. So mother, father, work, big change, big awareness, sudden, unexpected event here that is radically transforming the way you see yourself and the way you are relating to others. And whatever is going on is ultimately the work of your soul, the work of your spirit to help you step into a greater sense of authenticity and who you truly are. As a Leo rising, you are meant to shine. You are meant to be you, to creatively self-express, to love, to love boldly and freely, and to declare your sense of individuality and share that and shine that in all the ways that feel good and right and true for you. So blessed Capricorn full moon to you, Leo, and happy birthday soon enough as we enter Leo season. It's almost time. Yay. For Virgo and Virgo rising, this full moon is occurring in your fifth astrological house of children and creativity and joy and bliss and romance and all the good things, just all the good things, lots of pleasure, lots of enjoyment. This is also the house of entrepreneurship 
It is the house of taking risks, taking a leap of faith here, just going for it. Pluto is in your sixth astrological house of health and daily routine. So there's kind of that, how do I weave more fun and joy and creative expression into my daily life, into my reality, into my health? And how do I really do that skillfully? And how do I also connect with the people who light me up? There is likely to be awarenesses in terms of 11th house issues of your community, your soul tribe, friendships, networks, your galactivation being a part of the picture too. Perhaps you've been understanding and contacting more of your multidimensional self and perhaps this is influencing the way you want to creatively express yourself and the way you want to navigate your day-to-day -day life and like actually work with them, you know, work with your galactic friends, have some routines, have some practices that feel very soul aligned and soul centered for you and that can actually benefit your health and your well-being moving forward here. So this is very powerful as the Mars-Uranus conjunction took place in your ninth house of travel, metaphysics, higher learning, long journeys, and that sense of expanding your horizons here. So there may have well been quite a big awakening moment here. There could have been a study you've been engaging with, a study of a spiritual discipline or educational discipline. This includes college and graduate school and things like this as well, professional exams. So perhaps those took place and you are moving forward. You are ready to go on to the next thing with this new awakened insight, this awakened knowledge, and this sense of, yeah, right, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to take this out into the world. I'm ready to share it. And how very exciting that is to be on your spiritual journey, to feel guided, to feel like also you're meeting the right people, the right teachers, the right connections that help you feel that sense of journeying deeply into yourself and communing more with your unconscious, your subconscious, your dreams, your desires, your deepest needs, that you're on a path that helps you express that and also live that in your day-to-day -day life to not just know know the knowledge for the sake of knowing the knowledge but really to be also living it and letting it vibrate through your being through your body and express through all the aspects of your life and your relationships and your deepest psyche so very, very profound Virgo. Happy full moon to you. For Libra and Libra rising, this full moon is occurring in your fourth astrological house of home and family, your roots. So this theme of the ancestral healing is definitely very highlighted. It may also be involving children as well as more of that family of origin here. So your children, your creativity, transformational romantic relationships, transformational relationships with your children, very deep emotional realms also being a part of this full moon and becoming aware of certain things within your lineage, within mother, father, also how they may have manifested in your career, your public reputation, how you have chosen to be out in the world and serving, whether this is as a mother or whether it's as a mother and a career person, or as a father and a career person, as a father, as just a career person, you know, whatever it is, not a career person. I don't know what you're doing. You're just 
you know, nomadic and traveling around. Probably not if you're Libra rising, but you know, you could you could be chilling and <laughs> you could be at peace somewhere on a mountaintop. And if so, give me your coordinates. I'll I'll be there in a in a gif. So this awareness and this sense of balance between 10th house, more of that financial security, 4th house, emotional security, work and home and all, all the things, all the balance, all the letting go and what actually lights you up, what gets you going, what do you like to do? You may have recently experienced some kind of shift in terms of other people's energy as Mars Uranus can join in your eighth house of death and life and rebirth and the mysteries and the occult and esoteric subjects. So there could have been a sudden death. There could have been a sudden kind of kundalini awakening moment for you, a spiritual awakening moment for you that is really shifting how you see yourself, how you think about yourself, what you are thinking about, and also who you're wanting to connect with. So there could be quite a lot of relationships that are just kind of falling away as your priorities shift. And you are more fully aligned with the joy of your soul and the alignment of your soul and what you really need and, and feeling free, feeling liberated from other people's energies that just no longer serve your highest good. There's been a big release here. And to bless that and to trust that and to know that you are protective and that more expanded belief systems now will have place and space to take root and to flourish and that positive changes in your relationships are coming and certainly to how you relate to yourself, your community, your home, and your family as you engage in the work of your soul and naturally gravitate towards what lights you up and what excites you. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, this full moon is occurring right on your IC. So the moon is in your third house of communications, short journeys, lower mind studies, some of your day-to-day -day activities like text messaging and social media, the people you see every day, your local neighborhood, your local environment, Pluto here in your fourth astrological house of home, family, your roots, your lineage, the sun exactly opposite here, hovering between the ninth and the tenth house. So these issues of lower mind and higher mind, these issues of travel may be very highlighted, coming to a culmination, coming to a completion, perhaps some course of study you've been on, perhaps a a travel, a journey you've been on somewhere you've visited lately. And this is also very strong signature here for the ancestral healing, certainly for you, Scorpio rising, that it is very deep. It's very powerful. There may have been certain losses or forthcoming losses, changes in your relationships here as the Mars Uranus conjunction occurred in your seventh house of relationships. So there could have been a sense of breaking free from certain relationships that no longer serve your highest good, no longer are evolutionarily relevant for you. And this could mean that certain people are leaving your life so that there is more space for who needs to enter your life to come in and in in doing so, you have a greater sense of routine, of healing in your day-to-day -day life. There is more joy. There is more passion. There is a greater sense of your creative power shaping you and guiding you as whatever relationship release can help you connect to more of your 
authentic self and how you want to share that in the world, valuing your gifts and talents and feeling supported when you do put yourself out there, feeling like your words and your voice really do matter and that you can actually creatively self-express in maybe ways that you have not felt you've been able to because of your relationships, because of your roots and your ancestry. And certain things are just letting go and falling away. And if grief and sadness are a part of the picture here, to just know that and to honor that and to focus on healthy day-to-day habits, focus on bringing in what lights you up as much as you can, but this this deep ancestral work that you're engaged in, trust that it is mattering and trust that it is having a positive karmic ripple effect and that those who are present and those who may be present beyond the veil are very grateful for you and that you have a lot of protection beyond the veil as well and a lot of love and support beyond the veil. So happy full moon to you, Scorpio. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this full moon is occurring in your second astrological house of your value, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your finances, your possessions, the moon in the second house, Pluto in the third house. So your communication is also very highlighted. This could be a lot of spiritual messages here from beyond the veil, from the invisible realms, downloads, intuitive opening, like next level. The sun in the eighth house also pointing to that, that you are really, your clairvoyance may be more activated than usual. And if that is the case to protect your energy and make sure you have a safe space to cleanse yourself, to be in your own energy when you need to, to be at home, to ground, to cleanse and clear yourself and your space, connect with the water element and really take care of your energy because you may feel more psychically open than usual, even though you probably already do pretty frequently And you're just more aware of other people and their stuff and relationship themes may be very highlighted at this time as certain day-to-day realities have just shifted for you. This could have been a change in your health, in your well-being, in your daily routine here as the Mars-Uranus conjunction occurred in your sixth house. So definitely paying attention to your health, to your self-care, and to letting go of other people's energies that no longer serve your highest good and to cultivate that sense of self-love and self-worth and explore and investigate whatever you're really interested in at this time with Venus and Mercury transiting your ninth house. So maybe it's a trip you want to go on. Maybe it's a course of study you want to take that certain openings, certain connections can be coming in for you at this time as you open your mind and absorb new information that this can really expand whatever has just broken open, that it can kind of provide the next steps that now there's actually space to receive the communications, the insights, the change in mindset that can be facilitated by this Mars-Uranus transformational moment that occurred here. So this full moon, really, really beautiful, deep, mystical, and magical. Take time for self-care. Take time to be in your own energy and to let go of anything that 
no longer serves your highest good in terms of burdens, obligations, things that just really aren't yours, that maybe you've been carrying for way longer than you've needed to, that are coming from your ancestral lineage, to let them go, to be free, because you are ready to experience the all the joy and the expansion that are so deeply part of your Sagittarian, freedom-loving, adventurous, beautiful spirit. So happy full moon, Sagittarius. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, this full moon is occurring in your first astrological house of your self. So there can be completion in terms of your relationships with others as the sun is in your seventh astrological house of all your various one-on-one relationships. Pluto is in your second house of your finances, your material possessions. So there can be a sense of needing to value yourself more and how you're valuing yourself facilitating some changes in your relationships. These could be your romantic relationships as Mars and Uranus just met up in your fifth house of romance and children. This could be relationships with children that are also changing and changing for the better. So short term, it could have been endings or losses or things that feel like, wow, that's just like gone now. That could be hard or surprising, but ultimately this is a liberating thing. If there's been changes with your relationships in your children or with romantic partners here, there's creative energy that really wants to flow and needs to flow and Even this could be surges of insights and downloads about more of the mystery realms, more of the unseen realms coming into more awareness, like right in your face. (laughs) Like you are aware of it in yourself, you're aware of it in others, and There's this sense of quite deep letting go in terms of ancestral healing and perhaps even within your own lineage, like a spiritualization that is occurring, certain dissolutions are occurring, and really the invitation to make peace with all of the change to be in peace, to be in the higher frequencies, to feel what you need to feel, but also to let go and allow yourself to feel safe in your emotional world, to cultivate a sense of sanctuary and belongingness, whatever that means to you. And to know that you are loved And you are protected from the invisible realms within all of this. And to focus on your day-to-day health habits and cultivating that sense of joy and expansion and study and plenty of time really being in meditation and spiritual practice and going within that that could really serve you at this time as certain things are falling away and perhaps it feels really challenging but to know that that peace and love is always accessible from within you that really come what may You can be centered, you can feel safe, you can feel your wholeness and your connection to all that is. And that's something that no one and no thing can ever take away from you. It's your true nature. So happy full moon Capricorn rising. Aquarius and Aquarius rising. This full moon is occurring in your 12th astrological house. And this is the house of withdrawal, of dreams, of sleep, of rest and relaxation and soothing your central nervous system and just being in 
bliss in samadhi, maybe enjoying a sound bath or a guided meditation, shamanic journey, reiki journey, because boy, oh boy, have you been going through the personal transformation and what it means to be you, what it means to be alive, what it means to be constantly changing and shedding skin and growing and facing different losses also and all these different changes and transitions that are a part of life that are a part of the cycles of being human with the sun here in your sixth astrological house the theme of relationships is present but also the theme of your health your self-care your day-to-day -day activities and routines so certainly attending to your mental health your emotional health and also your physical health and what you need to do to feel really well and to be able to show up in your relationships in, in the way that you want to. So recently, the Mars-Uranus conjunction occurred in your fourth astrological house of home, family, roots, ancestry. So there may have been a big breakthrough in terms of that, something new, something surprising, something very fresh, perhaps something unexpected or sudden, suddenly coming in, suddenly going out, could have been a little bit of both, one or the other, and a sense of feeling more free in terms of any kind of ancestral baggage that you've been carrying on that you're not repeating those patterns moving forward and what freedom that allows you in all your one-on-one -on -one relationships now how much more you can love yourself you can love others accept others how they are in their uniqueness moving forward so lots of joy, lots of pleasure, lots of expansion in terms of creative possibilities and children as well, things going on with your kids and definitely the expanded sense of your own inner child here as you feel more and more deeply connected to your elder wisdom, to a sense of deep-seated generosity and really value more of your spiritual connection because that is what is going to help you pull through this continued work that you are doing with Pluto that may feel especially highlighted at the time of this full moon, definitely for all of us, but for you at this very personal level, that this could be a preview of more of what this Pluto transit might be for you as Pluto is in the sign of Aquarius for the next 20 years. So depending on where your Aquarius placements are, this may be highlighting what some of that is about for you. And so really taking this time to go within and what I like to do is send Reiki ahead to like the entire Pluto transit, send healing energy ahead to yourself and to all involved, really enveloping the entirety of the next couple decades that this would be a good moment to go ahead and do that and certainly to envelop the remainder of this year in as much love and light and higher frequencies as possible so that your journey is as rewarding and meaningful, smooth, easy, and filled with grace and possibility as possible. Happy full moon to you, Aquarius rising. For Pisces and Pisces rising, this full moon is occurring in your 11th astrological house of your friendships and social networks, your communities. There's a lot of overlap also with Pluto in your 12th astrological house of 
going within and being alone and being in dream time and being in meditation, shamanic journey, connecting deeply with yourself. This could be hypnosis, hypnotic regression, other kinds of ways of going really, really deep within. You may feel called to do that. You may feel called to do that with friends, with your community, with support. And as you do so, you may become aware of more of your creative power, more of your joy, greater sense of bliss, a greater sense of feeling inspired and connected to your own inner child, that issues with children may also be coming up as well. What do your children need? What does your inner child need? How can you really serve your own creative self-expression? more fully. And this could also be a time if you run your own business that you're more aware of entrepreneurship opportunities, and there's been a greater sense of focus and awareness within that area of your life as well. But there could be a sense of like you're taking a leap of faith here that your soul is really ready for, and you know it's coming from a very deep part of yourself. The Mars-Uranus conjunction recently occurred in your third astrological house of your mind and communication, short trips, lower mind, your studies, your local environment, so perhaps something sudden, unexpected, a big kind of awakening moment came within your mind. It could be that you're having insights and downloads and understanding and really connecting some of the dots. This could be like suddenly you are channeling light language or suddenly you received certain messages in your dreams and you kind of actually do understand what they are. Perhaps you're piecing together what it is that they actually mean. This could also be changes in your local environment, your neighborhood things shifting around in kind of unexpected ways, or maybe you're connecting more with people who are awake and interested in things that you're interested in. And boy, is that really fun and cool. And like, let's hang out and do stuff together, son, in the the fifth house. So really awesome, really beautiful. You're cultivating a very strong sense of your own inner authority, your spiritual connection, self-love, inner peace, no matter the outer circumstances. And this could be a time where you are feeling even more aligned with the right people, the right communities, and even more aligned with the heart of your inner child, your creative needs, and definitely making space to go within and just be grateful for all the blessings that are coming your way and connecting with you as you say yes to your awakening, your growth, and your evolution. So finding ways also to communicate with who wants to communicate with you, maybe these new galactic connections that are coming through, and also to be showing yourself that love and that creativity in your day-to-day life, folding that into your reality as much as possible. And chances are you already do that naturally, but to certainly continue doing that, maybe there's some extra sweetening of that as well. Happy full moon to you, Pisces. For Aries and Aries rising, this full moon is occurring in your 10th astrological house of your career, your public reputation. This is often linked to mother. It could also be linked to father. So yes, definitely still a carry on of the ancestral healing themes and finding the support of like-minded, like-hearted groups that you are a part of that can facilitate your continued engagement with ancestral healing at this time and help reinforce the broader, more expanded perspective that feels right and good and true for you. 
So recently, the Mars-Uranus conjunction on July 15th occurred in your second astrological house of your self-love and self-worth, your values, your material possessions, your finances. So there could have been major changes and shifts within those areas of your life perhaps feeling a more embodied sense of your connection to the galactic and shifting your reality and your values in even greater alignment with the new earth and the life that feels very authentic and natural and organic and aligned with your values that you are changing and you are growing and to allow your physical reality to really match that and to allow your body to accommodate that as well here. So this this could be quite a powerful combination of energies here with you as you heal and release these ancestral traumas and burdens connect with your soul family that this is really shifting your identity your self-love your value and allowing you to change in ways that are like opening your mind opening your consciousness getting rid of those excessive thoughts and really focusing on the key here is to focus on the thoughts and the mental habits that you know serve your highest good and really reflect your spiritual values, your spiritual connection, your inner authority, your true voice, and allow you to feel that sense of like coming home to yourself as an individual as a healer, as a being of immense, unfathomable, eternal value in your infinite true nature that is love, that is beauty, that is peace. So many blessings to you, Aries, as you continue engaging in this ancestral healing and reaping the rewards, the joy, the fulfillment, the connection, the creativity, the sweetness that this can bring into your life. Some of that may already be connecting for you, and there is more to come as the sun enters Leo, and you've got the sun and Venus and Mercury for a little while longer transiting your fifth house of joy and fun and bliss and play. So definitely delighting your inner child when all this ancestral stuff just feels very, very heavy, that you're meant to let it go and you're meant to be supported as you let it go because you do have a lot of invisible support with you and your mind can really expand to accommodate more of that as you make your peace and take care of your inner child. Happy full moon, Aries. For Taurus and Taurus rising, this full moon is occurring in your ninth astrological house of higher mind studies and metaphysics and long distance trips and travels and perhaps you're planning a travel or you're culminating a travel perhaps there's also big changes that are occurring in terms of your work your career your public reputation you're wanting to put yourself out there more but you're also needing to engage in in your family and home responsibilities to clean up your belief systems to clean up your mental space, your mental environment, and to really let go of anything in terms of the career, in terms of mother, father, lineage, ancestry, that is no longer serving your highest good so that you feel rooted and grounded and able to serve and share in the ways that light up your soul because you're coming to know your soul more you're coming to know 
more of who you truly are, becoming aware of your unconscious, your dreams, and more of your identity. You may feel like your identity is shifting, is changing. The Mars-Uranus conjunction occurred in your first astrological house. So you have been changing a lot here with Uranus and Taurus. We had the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in your sign and then Mars-Uranus in your sign. So there's been a lot of change, a lot of transformation, a lot of breakthroughs. You may feel more liberated, but there could also be this like, okay, so I'm liberated. Like, what do I do next? Like, none of this baggage is hanging on me, but like, please tell me what to do. And that's where the meditation and spiritual practice, time alone, time tuning in is so very important as you make friends with your own inner world, your own inner landscape, your own sense of inner emotional security, and what do you really need and enveloping that inner child in a big hug, appreciating your family, appreciating all the gifts and talents of your soul that you're becoming aware of that they are in fact valued and you have such value you have such amazingness to share and and what a gift that you are what a gift that you are shining the light of your soul and your spirit and it is your time to rise and it's your time to root. So finding a balance there between rising and rooting because you are certainly engaging powerfully in both areas. And the more you root, the higher you can rise. Beautiful and blessed full moon to you, Taurus. For Gemini and Gemini rising, this full moon is occurring in your eighth astrological house of life and death and rebirth and the esoteric and hidden realms and invisible support. And so all of that is very much there and present with you. There may be completions in terms of your energy, other people's energy, letting go of other people's energy that no longer serves your highest good. You just, you don't need any of that anymore. You don't need any of those internalized belief systems and programming and conditioning. Yes, retaining the gifts, the talents, the mastery that is valuable to you, but the other people stuff that's just clogging you up, it's time to let that go as you connect with a greater sense of self-love, inner peace, unshakable inner peace, no matter what, carving out the space for your own emotional security to be important, to be valued, to really tune into your own domestic needs and desires because lately this Mars Uranus conjunction occurred in your 12th astrological house. So there may have been sudden breakthroughs and surprises, galactic contact coming through in your meditations, your dream times, your shamanic journeys, Reiki journeys, hypnosis, whatever you do to connect spiritually, your alone time, being out in nature, that you're listening and how you're engaging is leading to a greater sense of breakthrough and more of your authenticity, being able to express and powerfully enact change and be a vehicle for your authentic self and who you truly are feeling free of these limiting beliefs, belief systems, institutionalized ways of being and thinking about yourself and reality, other people's stuff, that you can really just come home to yourself and feel safe in your own mind here with Venus and Mercury in your third house. Feel more connected to your own sense of inner authority, your community, the connections that facilitate healing and help you be a better healer, and 
allow you to share your healing gifts with others and be received in a respectful way in the wider community. So really, really powerful moment here, Gemini, to help you integrate whatever kind of very deep unconscious processes have been occurring for you. These deep breakthroughs may be manifesting more in your physical reality in the remainder of July as you continue walking courageously your path and just continuously filling the cup of your own self-love and inner peace no matter what you are supported. The invisible realms love you and support you and appreciate you in the work that you are doing and in the ways you are healing and growing. Blessed full moon to you, Gemini. One other thing I want to mention before we do the Galactic Heritage card pull is the Sabian symbol for the final degree of Capricorn. It is one of my favorites, so I am going to read the Dane Rodger, what is the symbol for Capricorn 30. It is a secret meeting of men responsible for executive decisions in world affairs. The power to assume responsibility for crucial choices arrived at after mature discussions with those who share this power. We are all aware now of the work of secret committees in the White House and at all levels of the government. The student of esoteric philosophy believes in the existence of what has been called an inner government, which has the power to direct or guide the evolution of our planet and of mankind. Some people speak of a cult hierarchy or of the White Lodge. Here again, what is at stake is a seeing through the facts of telluric processes and human history. Assuming that these facts are at least in part the outcome of the decisions of a supreme council of quasi-divine beings, obviously the symbol can also refer to what occurs at the more ordinary level of business and politics. At any level, it refers to the highest form of social interaction. This is the last symbol belonging to the scene 20 and related to the zodiacal sign Capricorn. We see in it the culmination of social responsibility and a reference to executive power. I remember first learning about this symbol and I really looked into the White Lodge and I invite you to do so too. It's linked to the Great White Brotherhood and basically like a circle of the Ascended Masters and Holy Fire Reiki lineage. What connected for me was the idea of the brothers and sisters of the light, the brothers of the light, this Great White Brotherhood. You can also connect it galactic, galactically to like these enlightened future timelines of, say, the Syrians who are the Ascended Masters or the ancient future timelines of the evolved Lyrans or in the case of this particular full moon, I think it's the enlightened Zeta beings because as we will see, the Zeta Reticuli is the species who wanted to come forward in our galactic heritage cards but this card really evokes that sense of we are held we are held we're the human team on earth that's doing the physical in the body on the ground work of evolution and ascension and enlightenment and healing and cleansing and purification revealing more of human potential and helping the earth and helping humanity live in a greater sense of harmony and that there are there is equal and opposite in the invisible realms of the amount of light workers on earth that we are like far outnumbered probably in the invisible realms at such a massive scale just thinking about all the help and support of around the earth and then around the larger solar system and milky way galaxy this symbol really makes me think of that so our invisible support moon conjunct pluto and aquarius particularly 
the earth support, but also the galactic support being incomprehensibly vast. So definitely know that you are very, very supported in the invisible realms. This is the galactic heritage card that came up for the highest guidance for everybody watching. And I just love this one, 79 renewed hope, Zeta Reticuli present. When a crisis passes and we are no longer deep in fear, there is a sense of relief. It feels like a new dawn has arrived and the future is filled with hope. This is where the Zetas are emotionally now. Their species crisis has passed and they are feeling a new dawn arising. This message for you is to see each moment as a chance for a new dawn. Nothing in the physical universe is constant except change. With each change comes the potential for beauty, joy, and growth. Don't let the moments of your life pass without noticing them as a doorway to awakening. Begin now. This card refers to an era of the Zeta civilization when their species crisis has passed and they are on the road to recovery. Suddenly, with the threat of their extinction over, they reconnected with their joy and began to feel hopeful about the future. At this time, they also really understood that they could not go back to the ways of their past and they had to reshape their civilization and themselves with a whole new paradigm. If this card came up in your spread, the meaning depends upon the surrounding cards and your life circumstance. It could be that you have recently passed through a dark time in your life and you are feeling the new dawn. If that is the case, then it is important to learn the lessons from the past and not repeat them before you move into your new future. It might also mean that you haven't yet passed fully through a challenging time, but you can look ahead to a time when the dawn will, in fact, be felt. Trust that when you feel exhausted by challenging circumstances. For those of you who have strong Zeta connections, this card may also mean that you have a connection with this Zeta era. Perhaps you had a lifetime then, or you're in contact with a being from that era. No matter the specific information, the key is to let yourself feel the energy of a new hope or a new dawn that is on the horizon. As you continue your personal healing and growth process, you move closer to this dawn, but always remember that your personal work never finishes. The Zetas learned this too and continued their self-healing work on a personal and species level. This deep inner work led to their species awakening. This inner work can also lead to your awakening as well. Moon and Pluto definitely speaks of this dark night of the soul and the promise of dawn on the horizon. And it's interesting that the period we're entering into September, October, half of November, we have Pluto back in Capricorn, and then it re-enters Aquarius November 19th, where it will stay for the next 20 years. So it's almost like we have just a little while longer, perhaps, you know, everybody's dark night is ending at different times, and we have different cycles of that. But as a humanity, we really are in the end is in sight. And it's also eternal, and there is no end. But the end of a dark time it's limited. It is finite. What is infinite is the possibilities, is the hope, is what's coming next. And it really is about each of us feeling inspired and expressing our authentic selves and knowing that these future timelines of enlightened Zeta beings are really with us and communicating with us and showing us the way and supporting us even in our darkest hours, especially in our darkest hours, because humanity has this history of assisting them in their darkest hour. And 
in the end, they are us and we are them and we are all one. That's very Neptune and Pisces. So I will end with that. Thank you so much for being here. Like I said, please let me know what resonates in the comments below. And I look forward to connecting with you more soon. For details on my offerings, please visit taylornorrisreiki.com. Have a beautiful, blessed Capricorn full moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.